I love coming back. I do. Um, I told my wife this morning, I feel like when I come back, I'm like home. I haven't lived here for a long time, but I, I feel good. And, and I also, uh, having played Division Three, my dad coached uh, at, in Division Three. I realize, you know, how uh, impactful playing uh, sports at that level was for me. And, and so I appreciate uh, all the time and effort you put in. Uh, I think the number one thing for athletic leadership from a player standpoint is to unite and inspire your teammates to do right and do more. So that's it. It's very, to me, it's very simple. The best leaders I ever had were those guys who did less talking and more doing, more uniting, more inspiring, and getting their teammates to do more. You should only be as happy as your least happy teammate. Right? Think about it. You have more, uh, more of a job than just to play well, more of a job than just to set the right example. You have to be perceptive enough uh, to locate and, and be able to identify problems. And then you have to be a problem solver versus a problem announcer. People talk about chemistry all the time. And you don't know it until you're a part of a team that has it. And the biggest factor of having chemistry is, can you genuinely learn two things? Are you happy for others' success? And have you learned to share? Have you learned to share the credit, the blame, the responsibility, the ball? Whatever it goes into, sharing is so important, but actually having that genuine feeling of excitement for other people's success instead of focusing just on you getting what you want out of it. People always say you either have good leadership or no leadership, and I don't think that's right. You either have good leadership or bad leadership, or somewhere in between. The best players on every team set the tone for good or, for, or bad. And then the best players are either doers or talkers. And if you gave me the choice as a coach, I'm taking people that do the right thing, where their actions speak so loudly, I don't have to hear what they say. I was afraid to miss, right? I was afraid to miss. So when you always have that in your mindset that, you know, what if I miss three in a row? I miss two. You know, that's not how you play. You know, you, you don't play in, in fear. You play, like, with great confidence. I think they say swagger, right? But I, I don't even know what that means. But you know, I'm too old. But, like, having a confidence that and a belief that your preparation will, over the course of a game, or over the course of a season, you're ready to play well. That doesn't mean every moment will go well. And it would be the same way to help that person who's down.